There's impulsive eating and then there's compulsive eating. Impulsive eating is eating without forethought. You kind of just take nothing into consideration. You might be doing it out of habit or you just see it and you want to eat it. So you do. We've all eaten impulsively before. Compulsive eating is a bit of a different story. Instead of having no thought, there's almost too many thoughts going on. Almost urges, um, overwhelming thoughts to eat. There's a spectrum to consider here. We can be overeating every now and then or we can be full on clinically diagnosed with BED, binge eating disorder. The topic can go rather deep. But I got you, like always, let's get into it. I want to leave with this. You may be here because you eat when you're already full, or you may eat when you're bored, or you might go for seconds and thirds when you're already full, or you kind of have a habit of grabbing a repeated snack, just repeated handfuls of a certain snack, when you probably feel like you've reached the limit. All overeating isn't the same, and everyone doesn't regard the same situation with the same logic. Sometimes someone might see something as eating when you're bored as a problem, but others might not see that as a problem. How you define overeating is up to you. Luckily, if you strip all the extra stuff away, we're kind of dealing with the same issue here at The Root. What can we take from that actual session of eating that can give us some insight to help us out? In a few moments, I'll share the ultimate question that has helped me and it is sure to help you. I'm gonna talk about this in a way that you probably have not heard before. There are two camps to address, the psychological camp and the technological camp. Let's start with the psychological camp, which involves mood, emotions, and mindset. When I was in college, I had a professor that I probably had a couple of professors that taught about binge eating um, and purging that goes along with that. And I remember sitting in my seat and thinking, that is a sad reality. How does someone get to that point? Of course, my question was never really answered in college. All we do is label disease. We don't really you know, get to the root of it. But it turns out the person in that session of overeating can be compared to the person who over shops, over stimulates themselves with drugs, over scrolls on social media, over video games, over Netflix, sis, 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 sis. Of course, these are all their own problems with their own separate complexities, but the overarching story is the same. Humans want to escape. When you dive into the world of eating disorders, you realize no one is really talking about the food that you eat. It's more about the mindset that you have. We go throughout our day moving, working, communicating, playing, but we never really pause to be mindful. We might have some negative feelings that we never address and they just kind of fester inside of us and we subconsciously decide to avoid them. And sometimes we just turn to food to feel better. I remember one time on my way back from work, I was driving and I was just in a bad mood, not in a, a road rage kind of way, but I was just feeling down and, and you guys know I'm a generally happy dude. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I would have these days where I'd be in such a poor mood and I didn't even know why. For some reason, I was able to muster up the conscious awareness to ask myself why I felt so down on my drive home. I told myself my day went fairly well. Why do I feel so down? And it took me a few miles of contemplation to get at the root of the problem. Did someone treat me wrong? No. Did I mess something up? No. But then it hit me. That morning when I woke up, for some reason, I felt insecure and I carried that feeling of insecurity throughout my entire day and didn't even recognize it until I decided to pause and think about it. I was lacking in confidence the entire day, just insecurity weighing on me. Unfortunately, I can't go back in time and do something to make that morning feel better, but it did something even better for me. It gave me a notch of emotional awareness. Emotional awareness isn't what you think it is though, it's a skill. It's one of those things where we can actually practice. We can pause, think, and recognize our thoughts, the source of them, and then we'll find ourselves more in tune with our emotions and our inner awareness. For some of us, it might not just be one single event that fosters an emotion, it could be the season of life we're in. Maybe we don't really like our job. Maybe we're not fond of our family's conditions. That stuff can weigh us down. So in terms of actual tools we can use practically, we can do what I did. Pause and question ourselves. We can ground ourselves with breathing meditation, or we can practice gratitude. Even if we aren't fond of the season, we can still find the things to be grateful for. And here's the ultimate question I want you to focus on. Am I eating with my body or my mind? Obviously, humans should eat when they're hungry and stop when they're full. If we're not following the parameters of what we think normal eating should look like, then we're probably eating with our mind. Eating just because you see it or think of it. One of the best things we can do is just pause and be, am I hungry? And just ask ourselves that, that general awareness of the body, listening to our body, oh man, it's so powerful. I guarantee you asking that question when you feel like you wanna overeat, it's gonna help you immensely. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in part two. Let's go over the nitty gritty of overeating. When you want to understand the mechanism behind something in the body, an anatomy and physiology textbook usually does the trick. Oh wait, let me get a shot of the 
authors. The authors of this one state, it seems that the brand's reward system gives off fireworks in a form of rising dopamine levels with sugar ingestion. Perhaps this response is the genesis of overeating, hedonistic behavior. So what are we getting from this? Food brings us joy. We are wired to really enjoy our food, but this is also the first time that we brought up hedonistic behavior. Sometimes we're not even looking to escape. We might already be in a good mood. We just want to feel even better. In this case, it's not escapism, it's hedonistic. Hedonic eating can take place if we simply lack joy in other areas of our lives. Kari or Kerry Dogren, listen, the names, they, they can go a couple ways. She's a psycho spiritual coach who wrote this on a blog post. If you took food completely out of your life, how much joy would you have left over? Overeating will never be fixed by the soul power of willpower alone. You can't just force a strict diet on yourself and expect a real root change. It's just not gonna work. In fact, I used to believe that willpower didn't even exist because I believe that everything we did as humans had either a psychological or biological reason. And regardless of how strong your willpower is, there is no overcoming that. But I came across something that forced me to understand willpower as something real. I heard willpower wanes as the day progresses. All of a sudden, I can recall all of those late nights I stayed up doing something that I told myself I wanted to stop doing. So willpower is real, but I don't think it's something we think it is. I think willpower is our ability to decide. So no one person has more willpower than the next because we all have that ability. Some of us have just done the inner work to make the better choice easier to make. Developing the skill of emotional awareness and intelligence is going to be your best bet to make the better decision. So that concludes the psychological side, but we still have to go over the technological side. We'll do that in part two, which I cannot wait to share. You forgot about it already. The technological side, we still got to talk about it. Now, we didn't cover every nook and cranny behind the psychi- uh, psych we didn't cover every nook and cranny behind the psychology of overeating, but you know that we can, so comment anything I may have missed, any question or anything like that. We can go deeper. Um, you know I make videos based on questions, so talk to me. I'm gonna see you in part two when we talk about the technological side, and it's not gonna be any stupid hacks like make your plate smaller or drink more water. It's, are people doing that? Is that working?